the first thing we need to acknowledge is that last year, you know, we failed as a unit. Um, we failed as a team too. So, you know, there's always going to be a lot of changes. I'm very happy with the changes they've made. Um, you know, they brought in some talent, Jordan Phillips, um, a proven player in the league, somebody that that's going to, you know, be able to contribute right away. And then um, the, the, the two draft picks, um, I think that was a great addition. So, uh, I'm really anxious to get back into a training camp setting and kind of see what we got. Um, you know, right now everything looks good on paper, but um, we really have to click and, and figure out how we're going to play together and, and work off of each other. And that's the best way to have success. And only um, practicing and, and getting that time together is going to really be the tale for that. Hey, Corey, it's Josh Mayenfuss with ESPN. Um, I want to ask you about the book club, the virtual book club. What made you want to continue it? Obviously, you know, you had to stop doing it in, at South Point because of the coronavirus and everything when school shut down. What made you want to keep doing it v virtually? What do you hope that kids are going to get out of it um, now? Well, um, when we first started the book club, you know, we wanted to reach as many kids as possible. Um, we decided to go um, and do it at South Point High School. And um, in many ways, that limited us. So um, we kind of just trying to look for silver linings in this pandemic and um, I think it's an opportunity to reach more kids. Um, it may be even a better format um, for me too, just because um, I can I can do these meetings with several different, I guess, classrooms, if that's what you want to call it, um, and really, you know, reach kids all over. Um, so for me, I like to accomplish um, the kids, for one, learning that they can read for enjoyment, um, re reading some books that they can take messages that they can, you know, use in their life, um, that make things easier for them now, as well as in the future, make them think from other perspectives, um, things like that. Um, and honestly, I get out a lot of it, a lot out of it as well. Um, I'm always so impressed by the kids and their points of views, um, the ideas that they come up with, the way they phrase things. It's always very interesting to me. Um, and so I'm looking forward to this. And um, you know, we just launched it, got the sign up sheets out there, and I'm 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 anxious to see how many kids we have signed up, and hopefully you know, we can take care of everybody. All right, we don't have Kyle, so we'll move on to Colin Harmon, Scott Bordeaux, and Nick King. Hey, Corey, Colin Harmon, ABC 15 Sports. Uh, going back to the, the book hub stuff, when did reading become a, a big part of, of your life and, you know, what books kind of stood out to you at a, at a young age that were important in kind of your growing up? Um, so, you know, I was, I was really blessed as a child with great parents. And although I hated it at the time, you know, all my summers, my parents made me read for 30 minutes, an hour a day, just depending on how they felt. Um, and, you know, that was one of, the, I guess, my worst memories. But, you know, as I got older and I spent more time traveling now, I started to read more. And, um, you know, my favorite thing about reading is that, you know, you can experience so much just from your imagination. Um, and oftentimes, you know, we read books and they make those books into movies. And, you know, I always like the books better, you know, because it allows your imagination to kind of fill in the blanks um, and, you know, make it your own story in a way. Um, so for me, you know, we started out going to the bookstore, picking out books. You know, we should read the Goosebumps series and uh, those were big. Um, you know, but, you know, really, honestly, um, as an adult is when I started to really um, read for enjoyment. And, and I, I enjoy reading things that um, are, are meant to improve you, you know, things like Rich, rich Dad, Poor Dad, you know, information based books, um, things that I can learn from. And that just kind of spurred on. And, um, and now I'm in a fiction. Hey, Corey, Scott Bordeaux from The Athletic. Good to see you. A lot of athletes give back to the community in, in different ways. You mentioned your love of books, but is that the one reason you're kind of doing this? Why books? Why give back to this way for you? Well, I think it's a huge tie-in with our education system. I think kids that can read better have more success. They're more confident. They're more, uh, you know, oftentimes, well, let me not say that. I'll say this, you know, um, when I was in college, you know, dealing with some of the guys on the team, you know, we would, we would talk about, you know, certain things as far as education and classroom. And a lot of the guys were not um, comfortable, um, you know, in a classroom setting because they weren't confident in their ability to read. Um, so, 
you know, that's not to say that they couldn't read, but, you know, they were uncomfortable reading aloud, you know, um, you know, anytime that they had to speak intelligently in front of other people, they were uncomfortable doing so. Um, and these are smart guys, you know, so um, I just think that reading is a very important thing. It's, a, it's an easy thing. Everybody has access to some information with the internet now. And, um, you know, if you can read, you're able to teach yourself anything. And I truly believe that. Hey, Corey, Nick King from 3TV, CBS5. Um, so you said you hated it when you were a kid and you had to read in the summer. Do you feel like the position you're in as an NFL player, that you can make reading look cooler to kids if you're in your position? And also, do you have books picked out for these kids already? So, um, you know, I don't know. You know, I'm, I'm hopeful that kids will sign up that want to be a part of the program. I'm hoping that it's not a chore for them. I'm hoping that their parents are not exclusively making them do this. Um, and I'm hoping that it's something that they want to be a part of. Um, and otherwise, I really don't want them to be part. I don't want to be dragging kids into something, you know, every other week to, you know, to talk. But I'm hopeful that they can see that, you know, my job, it really has nothing to do with who I am as a person, you know, outside of football. You know, it's just like, them probably you know I, I play video games i read books you know i hang out with family um and that's pretty much my life you know so uh what was the second what was the second question uh just wondering if you had specific books already okay. picked out for the kids so uh we were doing the program previously at the high school and um you know we got through two books and we were third book so we're going to pick the third book which is marcelo in the real world i don't have a copy but um you know, it's about a, a, a young kid and his father is uh, making him intern at a law firm for the summer so he can get some uh, real world experience. And it's, it's true. Everything is nice. It, it deals with real relationships and how people deal with one another. Um, the importance of treating people the way you want to be treated, those sorts of things. So I think that's a good start for this. Um, you know, person that likes to talk to the kids and maybe allow them to throw out some suggestions, um, read some things that they, they want to read. Um, so it's not so much a dictatorship, more of a conversation, um, something that's inclusive. Okay, next three questions will be Jess Root, Kevin Zimmerman, Darren Urban. Hey, Corey. Um, with your new teammates, have you had a chance to reach out at all? Have you had any conversations with your new rookie teammates there on the defensive line, Leckie and, and Richard? And to what, what sort of things, what do you think we can expect from, from Zach this year around after all he had the, the time off with injury? Um, so, you know, I was able to get those guys' numbers and I read them in myself. We talked briefly. Um, we take part in virtual meetings uh, Monday through Thursday every week. So, you know, we're all on those calls and we get that time together. Um, you know, and I, they seem like really bright guys, uh, humble guys, guys that are ready to come in and to compete and contribute to the room. And that's all we want. Um, we're going to be a rotational unit. So the more guys that can help and put their hand in the pot, you know, that's better. As far as that, you know, I think it was a struggle for him last year. Obviously, the injuries uh, played a big part in that. Um, so, you know, he got to take part in the educational side of things and being in those meetings every year. I think experience is going to help him as well as opportunity to spend that time in the weight room as well as this offseason. I know he's working extremely hard. So I'm excited to see what he looks like in camp. And um, I'm expecting him to be a major contributor for us. Um, you know, like I said, we're going to be a, a, a rotation-based group. So, you know, I'm expecting everybody to get lots of snaps. Hey, Corey, i um, just wondering with the addition of Jordan Phillips and all these uh, young guys, do you feel like Vance Joseph will just have more opportunity to kind of mix and match, just move guys around more uh, differently than last year when you guys were kind of banged up? Uh, absolutely. You know, I think if you look at what we did in the draft um, and, and the depth we built along the D-line, you know, flexibility has probably been the main focus of the team. You know, of course, I don't know that, but that just seems like, you know, what they're going for. Uh, obviously, uh, Isaiah Simmons is uh, such a vers versatile player, you know, and I'm excited about the D-line. You know, we've spoken about, you know, being able to play multiple positions on the D-line and, and guys being able to interchange here and there 
So um, I'm excited about that opportunity and, and I'm excited to see what it looks like. You know, it, it's been really challenging to spend this much time away, um, but uh, I think it's just making everybody that much more excited to, to get back to work. Hey, Corey, uh, Darren here. A couple things. One, with everything that's gone on with the off season and the lack of off season in terms of being together, um, is there more? Is there more on the shoulders of a veteran like yourself when you guys finally do come back to kind of bring this team together? And then, secondly, on the on the book stuff, do you do you have many book conversations with your current pro team mates at all? Um, so. Uh... I think one thing that's been great about this team is the leadership is really good um, and there aren't any bad, bad guys on the team, you know, and, you know, other places that's not the case. Um, so, you know, I don't think it's going to be that much of a challenge for us because I know that everybody's going to come back ready to go. Everybody's going to come back focused and in shape, knowing the playbook. You know, we've spoken on these virtual meetings about, Gordon, of, you know, taking this time seriously. Um, and really taking ownership over your, you know, your learning and your process so that when we get to, whenever we get together, whenever that is, you know, we can hit the ground running and really build that chemistry together. Um, and as far as books, um, with the book club, generally we have a different person from the team come every time we do a session. So um, this is that person will read the book and then discuss and bring their book to the book club. Um, and then as far as my corner of the locker room, design, you know, we talk about books a lot. Um, some of the guys do some different things, um, but, you know, we do have conversations about books and, you know, now that's kind of what I'm trying to do instead of spending money on gifts, you know, to find a book that is, you know, thoughtful that some that I would think this person might like and to gift that to them. So. Uh, I don't know if they read those books or not, but <laughs> but uh, they have them. So next three: Bob McManaman, Tressa Tudrick, Josh Weinfuss. Hey, Corey, mine's a quick two-parter. Uh, first of all, I was just wondering about <clears throat> kind of the brotherhood you spent with Kem Dietschy and trying to get him on the straight and narrow, and 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 how you feel that whole thing turned out for him uh, in terms of. I know you were there trying to guide him. What's your thoughts on how it turned out? And do you think uh, Lecky Fotu could be an emergency fullback? I'm sure you've seen some of the highlights. He's big and fast. I think he could be an H-back. Yeah. <laughs> um, one thing about Robert, um, Robert is, you know, a good guy, great guy, a person you want to have as a friend. Um, but, you know, he, he, he has to grow up some. And, you know, I, people warned him about, you know, what was coming and what, hap what would happen. Um, and I talked to him recently, and now I think that, you know, he has a better understanding and, and he seems to to be working hard and trying to make amends and, and hopefully get back in the league. And, I, and I'm hopeful to see – I hope to see him get another op opportunity. Um, and, and I did see some of the rugby highlights of Lucky. Uh, very impressive, big, athletic guy. Uh, I'd love to see him get a, get a carrier too, you know. I don't know. Uh, we don't use very many sets with fullbacks in Cliff's system, though, so – uh, we'll see. Hey, Corey, Dressa Tetrick, 3TV, CBS 5. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, my question for you is kind of how has the process been learning installs virtually? And is that a bigger challenge for the rookies who kind of can't get their, you know, learn their placements on the field uh, in person? Um, yeah, I think it's going to be really difficult for rookies. For me, um, it's, it's really not that challenging. A lot of the um, – defense is the same as it was last year um, as far as the calls and the terminology. So a lot of it is a refresher for me. Um, so it's really easy for me to retain that information. But for the rookies, I would hate to be um, in that situation. It's got to be really challenging because they're trying to learn um, entire new concepts, um, what I would assume. And um, the defenses are a lot more complex than what you would normally see in college. Now, obviously, you know, guys like Rashad is coming from a national championship program, you know, I'm sure they, you know, have a very extensive playbook as well. So, you know, the curve is probably not as much as it used to be uh, as, as it relates to that. Hey, Corey, two, two questions for you. The first is, what do you think kids are going to get out of having these conversations with you, the societal type of conversations, especially with everything that's going on in our country right now? And the second question is, are you going to feel comfortable playing 
um, football when and if the season begins with everything going on. So as far as the kids and me, you know, I feel like one of my favorite things about football is that in my locker room in Kentucky, in my locker room in Atlanta, in the locker room in Arizona, guys are from everywhere, all types of people, uh, from all parts of the country, different personality types. And the conversations we have in there, sometimes, you know, we try not to get too deep, but sometimes, you know, guys disagree and you hear other people's perspectives and you don't have to agree. But, I, but what that's taught me is, you know, tolerance and understanding that just because I disagree with this person um, at a certain level doesn't mean we can't work together and be friends and all these things. So, you know, that's what I hope for the kids to provide a safe space where they can communicate and talk. I can share my opinions. They can share their opinions. And, um, you know, mainly what I do is make sure that nobody is abusive or, um, you know, steps on anybody else's beliefs or anything like that. But I, I'm hopeful that the kids will see that, you know, everybody comes from a different place. They, they may think differently, but ultimately um, we all the same, we're all the same and we can find common ground in a lot of places. Um, and then the second part, you know, for me, um, you know, I think there's been a lot of different information out about the pandemic. And so honestly, where I am, I don't know what's true and what's not. And, and um, I'm trying to be as safe as possible for my family. I don't have any children. Nobody here is at risk. So um, we're a little less worried about things than I would imagine other people are. So, you, you know, I make a decision for myself and I would allow everybody else to, to make that decision for themselves, you know, and I respect whatever, you know, I don't think, I don't think it's wrong to, to, to think that way, but me personally, you know, I'm excited to get back to work. And, um, you know, if, if we're able to do that, then I'll, I'll do that and whatever they put in place to, make that happen, you know, I'll comply with it. We'll wrap it up with Colin Harmon and Howard Balzer. Hey, Corey, a couple of weeks ago, Richard was telling us he couldn't wait to get into the building to, uh, to pick your brain and, and learn from a, a veteran of your stature. What does that role mean to you? Um, it's important to me just because um, when I came into the league, I had a very hard time. Um, guys like Jonathan Babineau really spent time with me and taught me, you know, how to watch film and, you know, taught me how to deal with things, how to deal with my anxiety, things like that. I mean, things that you wouldn't even think about, but, um, you know, I'm very uh, thankful to him for that. Um, any guy that gets drafted or any young guy that comes to a team that I'm on, you know, I just reach out and say, hey, I'm here. I'm not going to come to you and make you do anything, but if you have a question, I'm always here to answer questions. And one thing that I like about Rashad is he texts me, asking me questions already and um that that shows me a lot you know that he's already to to think about you know improving himself and, and and i think it's important for us as a group hi corey this is howard balzer from si.com we've become such a zoom world over the last couple of months i'm curious if not only now with what you're going to be doing with the books but even potentially do you think that that could become a way for you to even be more efficient with it and perhaps get even more accomplished doing things both in person and virtually? Yeah, um, I think so for sure. Um, when we started the book club in person, we, we found challenges that we didn't expect. So I'd imagine it would be the same on Zoom. So, But from this standpoint, before we're getting started, I think it's going to be really great because as opposed to doing one session with about 30 kids, you know, I can do three or four sessions or, you know, just depending on the time and what's available that the kids have. So, um, you know, I think we can definitely reach more kids. Um, and it's something that, you know, I'm, I'm definitely thinking about keeping moving forward, regardless of what happens. 